let's spend some time talking about relationships between uh, mechanical moduli and TOC. And we'll be looking at the Marcellus shale here. And uh, the main objective, of course, is to determine whether or not these uh, elastic moduli, uh, as well as brittleness. And the, and the brittleness that we'll look at, we'll, we'll actually look at uh, briefly at three different kinds of estimates of brittleness. Uh, the brittleness that, that has most interest to us for those working with shales tends to be the mineral, mineralogical uh, estimates of brittleness. Uh, the, these relationships to TOC and the main outgrowth is that uh, TOC doesn't generally, is not generally associated, uh, can't be differentiated easily by uh, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio, ratio and brittleness measures, but it does tend to fall out as a low lambda rho mu rho region and the lambda rho mu rho cross block. And we'll show some examples of this. Uh, remember, or if you don't know, this will be a topic for another video, that lambda rho and mu rho are obtained from uh, uh, 3D 3C or 3D uh, uh, inversions, uh, pre-stack inversions, AVO inversions. And uh, again, that would be a, a topic for another video, but these are the parameters that uh, come out of those inversions. Previous work uh, done in this, with this <clears throat> objective in mind were undertaken by Alzate and Devagoda and Perez and Marfort, and again, they were using 3D 3C data, AVO inversions to derive lambda rho mu rho uh, from PNS wave impedance volumes. And uh, they, they found that lambda rho mu rho cross plots uh, were, were useful for lithology identification, identification of TOC rich zones. And they felt that they were good for differentiating between brittle and ductile shale intervals. Sayers notes that, uh, you know, working on the Eagleford Shale, that increased kerogen content, of course, kerogen, heat and pressure convert organic matter into a substance that's called human and, and then into kerogen. Uh, so time and temperature convert uh, kerogen into petroleum. So kerogen is a TOC measure, and with increased uh, kerogen content, we get decreased VPVS. Um, <clears throat> VP decreasing more than VS so that we get a decreased VP-VS ratio. And this leads to decreased values of lambda rho and mu rho. And um, again, these are derived from AVO extracted P and S impedance volumes. And um, <clears throat> these relationships in general uh, are becoming of greater interest, I think, in the exploration and development of uh, unconventionals. We see more of these uh, 3D, 3C data sets being collected and uh, this kind, kind of analysis being done to identify sweet spots ahead of uh, drilling. Uh, our examples, uh, the wells that we're going to look at, we're going to be looking at um, lambda, rho, rho, lambda rho, mu rho, and uh, elastic moduli from wells in the uh, central Appalachians of eastern North America. This would be the extent of the Marcellus Shale distribution in that region. And here is a vertical pilot well. Uh, we'll be looking at logs from this vertical pilot well. Um, <clears throat> these are model hydraulic fractures that were created uh, by stimulation of a single stage along this well. And uh, this is the microseismicity that's associated with that uh, uh, stimulation, that treatment at that stage. These model hydraulic fractures were developed in mangrove. Uh, and um, <clears throat> these uh, structure contour contours here are, are based on interpolation between these wells and other wells, wells in the region. So if we look at, uh, if we take a look at the logs and derived logs, from uh, that pilot well. We can see the P wave velocity. When we get down into, this would be the Marcellus Shale. This would be the target interval, particularly the lower Marcellus, which you can see has the highest TOC. Uh, you can see that the velocities are increasing a little bit in this lower, uh, more organic rich uh, shale. Um, 
the, these are the densities. You can see that these um, that there are some limestone streaks in here uh, that, that tend to give uh, high density read, readings uh, in, in the wellbore. Uh, this is a blocked off SH min uh, log. So we're seeing variations at kind of an upscaled version of the uh, closure pressure uh, with low closure pressures in the Marcellus. Uh, these are the derived lambda rho and mu rho parameters. And um, you can see that the uh, lambda rho is, you know, the, the lambda rho values in the Hamilton, uh, particularly in the um, Marcellus and the lower Montango, are fairly low. And uh, these are the brittleness estimates, and it's hard to say that the shale is more brittle. Certainly, you know, looking overall down here at the Marcellus, you conclude that it's more brittle, let's say, than the uh, lower Montango or the uh, upper part of the Hamilton group. But uh, is there a, a, a linear correlation to TOC? Well, that's part of the, the uh, that's what we're going to be looking at. So the mineralogical based estimates, there are two. There's a, an estimate um, proposed by Jarvie et al. Uh, the references are here. And another reference uh, proposed by Wang and Gale. And these are referred to as mineralogical based uh, brittleness calculations. So the uh, estimate by Jarvie, we've got quartz up here, quartz, calcium, and clay. Uh, Wang and Gale, we've got quartz and dolomite, and then of course we have quartz, dolomite, calcite clay, and TOC. Now, <clears throat> is there a correlation? Well, the values of the Jarvie index, uh, this, this will be a one-to-one -one line, and you can see that the, the uh, brittleness tends to be higher using the uh, brittleness, the Jarvie brittleness index in the higher TOC intervals, these orange and red uh, dots. And again, this is log data, so it's sampled every 0.5 feet. So the Jarvie estimate we're going to use, although you, you, know, you, could, you could argue either way, uh, but it seems that we're getting a, a better dynamic range here at least. The, the, the range of uh, brittleness is higher using the Jarvie estimate than it is using the Wang and Gale estimate. So here we're just looking at the lithologies. We've got lambda rho and mu rho, and we've got the lithologies listed over here. We're coming down through the, well, actually this is not in, in a stratigraphic order, but the Tully and the Onondaga are limestones, and they have fairly high lambda rho and mu rho values. The Montango stretches across this lambda rho mu rho space. Uh, it's not our target interval. The Cherry Valley is... Uh, uh, kind of just, just above the hot zone that we're interested in, the high TOC region. That would be the red dots here. Again, the Onondaga is the limestone up here, and the upper and middle Mahantango. So we're, you know, we're seeing the Mahantango kind of stretch over a large region of this uh, lambda rho, uh, mu rho space. The lower Mahantango, again, kind of falls in, falls together with this uh, high TOC region. So in that uh, lambda rho mu rho space. If we look at the brittleness associations and use Jarvie here, we can see that brittleness really doesn't uniquely identify the high TOC region here in the Marcellus because we see relatively high brittleness stretching out through the Mahantango. So the brittleness is not, you know, we wouldn't say that it's uniquely associated with high TOC. So it doesn't clearly differentiate the Marcellus from the overlying Mahantango. Uh, we won't say too much about this, but for those of you that are familiar with brittleness uh, estimates, you probably run into the estimate proposed by Greiser and Bray. And this, this is, in terms of the elastic moduli, you, you would probably expect this to be the better estimate of brittleness. You're using Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. And, you know, typically... Um, the um, lower Poisson's ratio, the higher Young's modulus, they tend to be more brittle. And these, uh, these will be the uh, this will be the estimate of brittleness from uh, the Poisson or from uh, Young's modulus, the uh, individual values minus the minimum value over the difference between the maximum and the minimum. 
And similarly for, well, sim uh, we've, we've got the Poisson ratio minus the minimum over the maximum minus the minimum. And the brittleness is just the average of those two. So, um, and of course, when we look at this measure of brittleness here, the brittleness average, we really see the brittle intervals as being the uh, limestones, the Onondaga and the Tully. And that's pretty much what we'd expect. If you ask me whether a limestone was more brittle than, than a shale, uh, you know, I would kind of intuitively feel that the limestones would be more brittle. The Marcellus, on the other hand, uh, turns out to have the least brittleness by this measure here. So the lambda rho mu rho distribution in the Hamilton group, again, uh, high TOC is concentrated in the Marcellus, and uh, the highest uh, uh, TOC uh, showing up kind of in the core of this area. Uh, for the gamma ray, uh, the high gamma ray streak right in here. This also tends to be associated with uh, high TOC, but that association is not really so good. Here we're looking at gamma ray versus TOC, so we have high TOC, we have high gamma ray, and it you could fit a straight line through that data, but it's it wouldn't be a high high coefficient of determination. So um, uh, TOC tends to fall out a little bit more better using the lambda rho and the mu rho uh, cross plot than it does with a gamma ray TOC plot. Here we're looking at uh, Poisson's ratio and Young's modulus, uh, and you can see that the high TOC region uh, does coincide with the lower Poisson's ratio and the lower Young's modulus. Uh, don't think about brittleness at this point. This, this is just the association with high TOC, lower Poisson's ratio, lower Young's modulus. And uh, those contours have been transposed onto the lambda rho mu rho plot here uh, with contours of Young's modulus. As we're getting into the lower Young's values of Young's modulus, we get into this higher TOC region. And also we tend to see as Poisson's ratio falls off, we're getting into this higher uh, TOC region. So an important point to make about all this is we've, you know, been, you know, what we've been looking at here has been based on sampled uh, well log data at a half foot interval. Now if we start talking about what are we going to see in our seismic data set, we really need to think about what happens. Uh, when you smooth out the log data uh, using a wavelet, a seismic wavelet. And just to use an example, the Marcellus has an average velocity of about 13,000 feet per second with a peak frequency perhaps of 40 hertz. If you're lucky at that depth, that would give you a vertical resolution limit of about 80 feet. So again, the log data are half foot samples. Uh, so if we take the lambda rho mu rho data and we smooth it, uh, we see that the range of high TOC region, the high TOC region is reduced by about 50%, and it's, it's also kind of smeared out. So we don't really get high resolution of the uh, association, the, the relationship between lower lambda rho mu rho and high TOC that we do when we are working with well log data. So it's likely that if you're interpreting seismic data that you're you're going to be you're going going to be um, overestimating the extent of the high TOC regions that you um, that you see or that you derive in your uh, 3D seismic inversions. So some basic conclusions here. The uh, TOC rich intervals in the lower Marcellus are associated with that lower range of lambda rho and mu rho. That was fairly clear. Uh, the mineralogical based estimates really don't, um, you know, they, they just aren't uniquely associated with high TOC intervals. They, they, uh, the mineralogical based estimates and uh, certainly the uh, Greiser and Bray estimate uh, seems to do the opposite as, you know, really we would expect that with uh, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Uh, log drive values of Land Bureau and Muro provide high resolution of that relationship, but when we're dealing with seismic data, 
it's going to reduce the resolution of the lower lambda rho mu rho region and its association with TOC. So this reduced seismic resolution suggests that, you know, may suggest, if you're interpreting the 3D data, that the TOC regions are more extensive. Uh, high TOC intervals observed in the surrounding wells would be uh, targeted in the lower lambda rho mu rho seismic zones, but the uh, seismic data could be misleading. It could indicate, you know, basically it could indicate that you have more uh, high TOC uh, volume than you actually do, so that would be something to keep in mind. Uh, references here, uh, you can pause this if you like and uh, take a look at the references from which a lot of the material came from. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for joining us and we'll